And good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torres. Thanks for tuning us in. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. This Saturday, we're going to talk swimming. Got uh, my old friend Ashley Shooty in. Good morning. Hello. Oh, I say old friend. My, I shouldn't say old because that kind of <laughs> dates us both. Well, so we've known each other for a long time. We have. We have we known have. each other since uh, we both had darker hair at times. So <laughs> how's things going? It is great. Thank you for having us here uh, today. Thanks for being on. We like, I, I like talking about swimming. It's a sport that I don't know a, a great deal about. I'll be the first to admit. Although I've learned a lot from talking to swim coaches over the last several years. And I've learned that um, you got to spend a lot of time in the pool. You do. You do. It is not one of those sports that, uh, as we've learned here in the last couple of weeks, um, you've got to be in the water. Yeah. You can, you can condition, you can exercise, um, but to get in swim shape, you need to be swimming. Let's talk about, uh, let's go back and reflect on a year ago. You're, you're, when we talked a year ago, I remember, I just talked a little bit ago, I remember the conversation you had talked about, you had youth coming up, and, and it was kind of a youth movement, and the, the numbers were good coming up, and you were waiting on groups to get there and make things healthier and better. And So talk about last year and your growing pains. We, um, <clears throat> we are very blessed to have a good feeder system, mm -hmm. and, and the junior high team, we've had six or seven undefeated seasons mm -hmm. with our junior high team. So we knew that we had... Um, because swimming is numbers right and you know in our conference we are a small school with a small team and as competitive as we are individually it's it's hard to compete collectively mm -hmm. if you don't have enough to fill fill events so we knew that this year would kind of be the first of of the benefits that we've been putting together through the, throughout the feeder system so we had um, our breakdown this year we've got six seniors We've got um, six juniors, five sophomores, and four freshmen. Mm -hmm. And our eighth grade class this year um, that will come in next year as freshmen will, will be a nice boost. I'm thinking six to eight. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're starting to see that. Um, we had several freshmen come in and, and make immediate contributions on both the girls' and boys' side. Um, so we've got a, a great team rounded out. We're looking for um, some, some really exciting things as we come into our conference meets here this month. You, you look at, and, and every program, and I don't care what sport it is, goes through those growing pains. And, you know, there's always the light at the end of the tunnel that everybody, all the coaches are waiting on. Um, uh, but that's not to take away from the kids that, that swam for you a year ago that, you know, they're, they're trying to get themselves better to prepare for seasons coming out. Absolutely. You know, I, I think you'll talk with Ian here a little bit. Um, we had a conversation last year about this time about um, what fun this season was going to be because mm -hmm. of the, the potential. Right. And, and especially on the boys' side, our girls <clears> – <throat> are extremely competitive there's just not enough of them right. so this is a call out to girls who who swim <laughs> um but the the boys i think last year saw something special too and, and at the beginning of the season we sat down and had what what we called a classroom session mm -hmm. um about getting on our bus and and that bus represents our team it represents our goals our potential our expectations and we asked the kids <clears throat> excuse me to buy in and and they all did right. and they've been working extremely hard and and there's a couple things um kind of on the radar that are within reach um you know in the form of a relay record um, conference i really think we're going to make some noise on the boys side at our conference meet and i'm very excited to see how they perform at sectionals so instead of preparing for for each meet as it comes along this year we kind of thought you know what conference and sectionals is right. is really where we want to build to sure. um, our season makes that a little challenging mm -hmm. in the timing um, because the holidays are, are kind of right smack dab in the middle of it and we don't want to take away too much from family time mm -hmm. but um, you know they've just, they've just they've committed and they've worked hard so we're, we're very excited to see where the next month for the girls because we're we're already there right and the boys have about six weeks left. When you get done with the season, uh, last season we'll, we'll use an example. You get done with last season and you think, okay, this was whatever the season was. This is what we have to do to prepare for the next season. 
what what can you do? I mean, is there much you can do in the off season other than swim and lift weights, or, or is there? I mean, what's what's your kind of regiment for the off season with your with your group? Well, I, as I was preparing for this morning, I looked at our roster. We've got eight to ten multi-sport athletes. Mm -hmm. So we've got kids who are either running cross country playing football or soccer mm -hmm. in the fall then they're swimming all winter and then several of them go right into cross country and track which all of these sports are wonderful conditioning right. for the other so uh, for those those kids who aren't in another sport mm -hmm. we obviously encourage them to swim right. year round um, that's the best thing that they can do we also encourage them to try something else, you know, because that does get tedious, right. um, as I think both of our kids would, would tell you. Um, so, you know, branch out and try something else because, one, you're going to you're gonna benefit one way or the other, but, but you're also going to meet other kids. Right. And, and through that, we've gotten a couple of swimmers this year for the first time from other sports that have just been a great addition mm -hmm. to our team. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's a number of benefits to multi-sport athletes. Right. But, you know, if, if you're not doing something, that's not going to be good for you, any of us. You lift a lot of weights? <laughs> we don't. Um, Jay Roney is our strength coach. Mm -hmm. And there's also a, an advanced PE class at the high school that most of our kids are enrolled in. And so they get the weight training throughout the day, sure. which, which is incredible because, as I think I was sharing with you early on, our pool's at the junior high, so our kids get out at the high school, and then they have to make that seemingly long trek from, <laughs> from one parking lot to the next. So by the time they get there, and then they get changed, and by the time we get in the pool, it's usually quarter till four, ten till four, and we have to be out by six. So we're, you know, we're crunched on time. So we encourage our kids to enroll in the strength training class. Um, so they're lifting, you know, five days a week, and um, it, it has really, really paid dividends for those who have bought into that. Really? It has. It has. You, you would, you would, I would. I told you, I didn't know a lot about swimming. I, I would think you wouldn't be able to see the the benefits from that, but you can see the benefits. How? Um, strength for yeah, starters. Right. You know, you don't think about swimming being a very strength-oriented sport, sure. but you know if if you don't have core strength mm -hmm. your swimming is just not going to be where it could be right um, it, it, he does a lot of cardio he does full body he focuses on different things on different days right. um, a lot of it's just resistance training not a lot of weights and he specializes knowing that he's got you know a number of swimmers in this class right. this is your workout for today the you know obviously the football workouts gonna look a little differently right. um, you know those guys are are in there two or three times a day right. some of them in class and then after school weightlifting so he has been a huge mm -hmm. asset to our school district you mentioned something before we got on this morning about and I, I got to bring this up about doing yoga I want to talk about that for a second <laughs> you did yoga and the kids loved it Yes, <laughs> they did. Yeah. Um, you know, when you got to get creative. Right. Sometimes we we have our maintenance crew at the school does an incredible job with our facility. Um, but in the last two and a half weeks, we just kind of had a run of you know it was our turn right, right in the pool. Right. Um, so we we've been out of the water more than than we'd like. But you just you have to get creative sure. with you just can't take the day off. Um, so yoga is one of those things that we do, and um, despite my best efforts, because I love it, um, they just moan and groan, and and they won't tell you, but I, I think it is challenging for them. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a great way, because flexibility, we talked about strength, flexibility sure. is just as important. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you don't have that ability, and, and that builds core strength without... Right. Um, getting in and and just kind of sweating it out. A lot of people think it's not a workout because you're just not drenched by the time you leave. Right. But it's a, and I, and I I told them the last time we did it. I think everybody, not just kids, but everybody right. today struggles with just finding that quiet space. Mm 
um, and, and to be able to be mindful of where you are and what's going on around you and how your body is, is reacting. Um, you know, they, they all struggle to take care of themselves. They don't get enough sleep. Um, you know, we don't eat well. We don't hydrate the way we should. So sure. if we can just take 30 to 40 minutes once a week or so and just kind of reset Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's very important for a number of reasons. John, talk about yoga. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm kind of with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it, okay, so let's, let's just, uh, I'm with you. I've done it one time, and that was enough for me. But it, if, if they can hack it, and they, you can get the, the mind over matter kind of thing, is, is it something that they should be doing? You know what, it is so important. I mean, she touched on that we've had to be creative. It's something I'd like to see worked in, regardless of whether we have pool time or not. Mm -hmm. um, I have a daughter who loves it. She swam her whole life. Right. And if she was here, she would tell you, oh, it's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, you take that core strength from your stomach out, every stroke that you do, everything that you do in swimming, it starts at your core. Right. You know, I, I know the kids don't like to do it because it stinks. It's, <laughs> it's rough, it hurts, you feel terrible, you know, the next day, mm -hmm. because I'm with you. That one time I did it, it was, it was miserable. It was miserable. But I, I just, I think we need to incorporate it a yeah. lot. And, and uh, Ashley, for you then, is it something that more programs should be thinking about trying? I mean, you seem to be a, a good advocate for, for yoga. I, I am, and I, I, for, for a number of reasons. I mean, I look at the academic load that, that my kids carry mm -hmm. here. <clears throat> There's just not a lot of downtime. Right. But between the time they go to school all day, you know, they go right into their practice. Several of them have jobs, mm -hmm. and then they're at home studying. They just, I think f for me, it's as much of a mental thing and, right. and, a, and an emotional well-being as it is a physical thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I absolutely think there are benefits to it. Um, we've, we've talked in the office about how we can work that in sometime during the week and have somebody, because just as an overall wellness piece sure. um, for any organization really, I think there are huge benefits. Yeah. Do you, and you know, any kind of exercise, now, uh, let me rephrase that. Not any kind of exercise. Most exercises are going to be beneficial dependent on whether they're done correctly or not. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And yoga is another one of those. If, if you're going to get benefits from it, it has to be done the correct way. Absolutely. And, and to do it well and to do it correctly, it's, it's going to hurt mm -hmm. because you're going to find out where your weakness is pretty quickly. Right. Um, and we've had a couple of different, um, Susie Bruner came in and, and we started this at the tail end of the season last year and kept it with the junior high kids and they absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. um, some of my high school kids continued to come with the junior high kids. Um, Mr. Campbell at the junior high has been gracious enough to share some of his time with us and we hope to be able to incorporate that as we get back from break and, mm -hmm. and come into conference and sectional time as part of that, that preparation because it's not only a physical preparation, sure. it is a mental preparation yeah. regardless of what sport you're in. Let's talk a little bit about, before we take a break, let's talk a little bit about about uh, this season and, and the success. I know you've had problems with the pool the last couple of weeks or so, but talk about success you've had th this season with your team. We've had a great season. It's been a lot of fun. Um, we have an exchange student right. from um, Argentina with us, Val Gonzalez, mm -hmm. um, who has broken a couple of our records. Sure. Uh, 50 free, broke it once, and then the next meet turned around and, and broke her own again, mm -hmm. and then the 100 fly. So she has just been... Uh, a delight mm -hmm. to have, um, not only for competition purposes, but just just a wonderful young lady, right. um, and has come in and really, really fit in well with the team. Um, our boys beat New Albany, mm -hmm. which was the highlight uh, thus far. Uh, we've got high expectations for these kids mm -hmm. the rest of the season. Um, our girls head to conference January 12th. Um, so we're, we're looking uh, to, to benefit there. The boys head to conference on the 26th. Um, so, you know, we've got six or seven meets between now mm -hmm. and the end of January. Um, and, and then we get into our tournament. So, Got some players in. Got players. Got some swimmers in. I'm so used to calling them all players. Got swimmers in this morning. Couple of them. Ashley, talk about who you got this morning. This morning we have Ian McMahon and Katie Royce with us. Um, Ian is one of our seniors. Mm -hmm. um, been swimming 
we've been together a long time, haven't we? We all have. Katie has also swam uh, for, for several years. So these are products of our feeder system through yeah. all the way through, um, which is pretty cool to see. Right. Um, it, swimming, one of the, the neatest things about it is it is truly a family affair. Sure. Um, you've had, there's four brothers who swim, Katie's younger sister swim, so it's fun to have all of the siblings together at one time. I right. think this is the first year in several that we've not had two McMahons. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. usually my brothers are here with me and we always have a good time. That's and it's right. A lot of family competition there. <laughs> <laughs> but to see, actually to see kids come up, especially multiple kids and families come up through the system and, and enjoy the sport of swimming it's nice to see that it's incredible to see and in every place we go and and one of the cool things about club swimming is in, in any club sport for that matter is the, these kids get the opportunity to compete with other kids beginning you know four five and six years old sure. from other schools and, and form those relationships and those friendships so that by the time we get to junior high and high school you know there is a uh, there's a whole nother level of competition there, I think, um, yeah. as, as you enter your conference and sectional meets because you, you've been together for so long, you know what they're capable of, right. and you know what you want to do. Right. Wow. All right, Ian, uh, talk about your swimming and, and why you got involved with it. Apparently, it's kind of one of the things inside your family. Yeah, well, um, my oldest brother got involved when he was about 10 years old, mm -hmm. and then from there, each one of us got involved at like six, seven, eight, on down the line. Yeah. Um, I've been in H2O, the club program, mm -hmm. and you swim that until you get it to junior high and high school, right. and then you can continue to swim that over mm -hmm. the summer as a year-round conditioning thing. And uh, it's it's always a lot of fun. It's yeah. it's nice to you know see the same kids all the time, and then see them grow up, and watch them become part mm -hmm. of the system that you were in, mm -hmm. and then. Um, you know, it's nice to recognize some swimmers at other schools, like, hey, I saw you right. at this team during the uh, club season. Sure. And, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a, lot of, a lot of fun. What's, uh, what's your favorite part of, of being a swimmer? I think it's just the, uh, the challenges. Mm -hmm. I, I like the, um, the physical and the mental challenges that are involved in swimming. Um, I think I get a little rushed from every time when I, you know, beat myself, I do mm -hmm. something better than I've done it before. Right. And that's, um, and not to mention, you know, winning meets, things like that. That's always fun. That's too. always fun. Yet, do you have a favorite event that you do? Uh, most of the time, I've been swimming the uh, 100 breaststroke. Mm -hmm. That would be my, my main event. Uh, I did pretty well in sectionals last year in that event. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's what I usually swim. Yeah. What about uh, for you to, to look forward to the conference and section? I think there's success coming. Yes, I am actually really surprised. It's actually really um, amazing to see um, as you have come up through the high school years, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior year, you go to sectionals and conference and you see all these schools that are, are dominating mm -hmm. these. And then you go to a one on one meet with them and you realize hey, in my senior year, they're nervous about Madison. Right. You know, they, they, they care that Madison is there, and they right. are looking at them saying, what are you guys going to do? Mm -hmm. And I think that's an amazing feeling, um, how we beat. We've had good conference wins like New Albany. Sure. Um, just really exciting stuff, things that we never really thought we would be capable of beating, and right. now we're there, and we're doing amazing. Hard work. Hard work. <laughs> yeah. You have uh, college plans yet after high school? Uh, yes, I was just recently admitted to Texas A&M at Galveston. Yeah. And their uh, maritime program mm -hmm. and the Corps of Cadets. Oh, cool. So uh, I'm looking at the uh, Navy. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, maritime industry. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for being here this morning. Good morning, Katie. Hi. Uh, how long have you been swimming? Long time? Forever. Forever? Um, Why in the world did you get involved with swimming? Well, when I was a kid, I liked to go to the pool a lot, and uh, my mom had heard about H2O, and she's like, let's try it. So I said, okay. And uh, when I tried it, I didn't really think it was for me, so I quit my first grade year and tried basketball and softball, and I was like, no, this is not it. <laughs> so I went back to swimming and have stuck with it. Is it is it hard? Is it a lot of work? It is a lot of work, but I like it, and I've kind of grown up with it and learned to love it and all of its flaws. Do you uh, you like yoga? Um, 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's good for me. It's it, it helps me and it helps with my mental capacity yeah, and to learn that I need to use all of my muscles and all the things. And uh, like John said, using your core and all mm. your strokes is important. And using yoga to help with your core is important. Wow. That's a good. An- that is a good answer. <laughs> That's a really good answer. Uh, what what uh, events do you swim? Um, I swim a couple relays mm-hmm. and I swim the 200 free and the 500 free. Do you have a do you have a favorite? Um, I like to swim the 500 free. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a little slow at it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm getting better. Yeah. Um, I like to swim the hundred free when I'm when I'm put in it too. So. What uh, what what will what will cause you or what will help you be a faster swimmer? Um, if I use my legs, if I learn how to kick, uh-huh. that would be helpful. That would be helpful. <laughs> That's see, that's that's why coaches want to hear that kind of stuff. Do yeah. you have you have um, uh, outlook for sec for conference and sectional? Um, I I plan to do really be- good. Um, last year I did good. Um, I became an alternate in the 500 free just by one place. Mm-hmm. Um, this year I plan to strive forward and drive myself and to work harder to make sure I get in the top 15 in order to swim second day and mm-hmm. learn how to. You're not a senior. No. You're a sophomore. sophomore that's right. Um, it, are, is it exciting to see all the younger kids coming up through there? It really is. Like last year, I was really nervous because I was a freshman and all these people were super fast, and I was really nervous. And mm. then this year, I'm like, it's it's okay. I know what I'm doing. And right. Watching the other kids come up and they're nervous too, and giving them the talks and saying, hey, it's okay. Just you need to do your best. Yeah. It's it's fun. It's it's fun. Well, thanks for being here this morning. To finish up the segment, Ashley, let's talk about, I and mean, we talked about it a little bit when we hit on it, um, kind of hitting on going to sectional, going to conference, and then l- you don't want to look to next year already, but you already know, you know, there's some good things coming. You hate to lose your seniors because they're an important part of the program, but uh, they have to move on. you got to keep rebuilding. We, we have an incredible group of seniors this year, and um, each each year gets harder and harder because you do get attached to them. Mm-hmm. As crazy as they drive you on any <laughs> given day, you love them like you're, you know, they're your own. Right. Um, so we are going to lose a, a lot, not only from leadership, um, but competitiveness to just good kids. Right. But they are going to go on and do incredible things um, we do have a lot coming up from the junior high we're very excited we I think average 40 to 45 middle school swimmers and we're going to add the fifth grade this year sure so um, that is always a lot of fun um, but it, it's just our theme this year um, as as we've and we're going to take this down to the junior high level as well Is are you practicing the way you plan to compete right And at the beginning of the the season, um, before we started, I broke down by month. And we really don't have, when you look at it, it's a long season, but at the same time, there's there's not a lot of time. Right. Um, By the time you take out practices and meets, you know, you're in the teens, 13, 19 days of practice, Mm -hmm. and then every other day is a meet. Um, So you've got to make the most of every opportunity you have in that water. And and so you've got to push yourself, as Ian said, to be uncomfortable. Mm um, you know, you, you they they do listen to what you tell them, right. as as Katie shared. But are you doing that each and every time you have the opportunity? Um, mm. Because that's how you get better. Yeah, you and sitting around thinking about getting better doesn't get you better. No, you're absolutely right. Um, looking at at uh, and you've already the boys have already defeated new albany yes looking at conference what's what how do you stack up against everybody else we've got columbus east coming in on the eighth i believe Mm -hmm. um i I think our boys are going to be able to to compete there as well um we had an incredible showing at jennings county we split that meet um as i said our girls hands down flat out can compete we just don't have enough of them and and i don't know i think we've had one meet where we've had everybody you know that's always kind of the 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 fun thing to go back and look on to is how many practices did we have everybody because we've had a couple out injured Mm -hmm. um we've had some illness um We've got a couple that will be joining us January 5th Mm -hmm. that we're looking forward to having back and and able to participate. Um, So if we get up to full strength um, and have everybody at one time, we can compete with anybody. Right. And the the outlook of what you have now to what's coming and future seasons. And I mean, it's, it's hard work by everybody. 
and it's not something that just happens overnight either. It's not. Um, we have a lot of people that, that put a lot of work into our feeder programs. We have um, some incredible coaches on our H2O staff. Um, my husband, John, has now joined our high school staff as a volunteer coach. Um, so that's bringing a little, you, you we're kind of bridging that at a, at a different level in sure. a different way. So as those kids come up, um, you know, there's a lot of consistencies in the approach and the mindset and the mm -hmm. philosophies. Our parents are incredible. Right. But from, from H2O to the junior high to the high school, this is a commitment. Um, swimming is, is not for the faint of heart. Um, you know, we go for weekends and there's a lot of together time and a lot of family time, which right. makes it just a wonderful place. Um, we've got great kids um, and we're just very excited about Madison swimming in the, the next several years. And there we are. You've had assistant coaches around for a while. We, John and I, I call John my pool husband. <laughs> I've got my pool husband, John, and my, my real husband, John. But um, when I came in, John Ray provided that consistency that, that, that helped me get up to speed with right. everything going on several years ago. And we couldn't do this. We have a lot of fun. Right. Um, and and we're, we're each other's, you know, sounding board on any given day. Um, but we just really enjoy this right. and, and enjoy putting in the time. It's And it's a lot of time, indeed. Yeah. Ashley, we appreciate you stopping by this morning and talking with us. Best of luck this season. Thank you very much. All right. That's Ashley Schutte, also John Ray in. I want to thank Ian and uh, Katie this morning for stopping by McDonald's and talking with us here on Coach's Corner. Thanks to A.J. Bramer in studio. We'll be back next Saturday for Coach's Corner live from McDonald's here on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance on Works 96.7. Sponsored in part by McDonald's, 744 Clifty Drive, Madison, Indiana. Chandler Chevrolet, 600 Clifty Drive, Madison, Indiana. Sears C Monument, 180 West J. Loudon Road, Kelton, Kentucky. Anderson Sales and Service, 2914 Clifty Drive, Madison, Indiana.